Today's video is about self-care and one of the creations that I learned to make that helps moisturize my skin as well as allows me to slow down and smell the roses, so to speak. Grab a cup of tea, join me. I certainly am not a doctor. Let me put that out there front and foremost. However, I think it's safe for me to say that my autoimmune disorders are impacted by the level of stress I'm under. Uh, so stress is not good for my health. I don't personally believe that it's good for anyone's health. And so it's really important, in particular if you suffer from an autoimmune disorder, that you have ways to cope with stress uh, and some of the symptoms that are a result of your condition. Today, I just wanna share one of the creations that I learned how to make in order to address uh, the skin discomfort and the extreme dryness that result from the vitiligo and the Sjogren's. Now, which one causes more or less of those dry symptoms? I can't say. Again, I'm not a doctor and I suffer from both. What I discovered is that uh, making my own soap is both very relaxing, I enjoy the process, uh, and self-care looks different to everyone, but I make soap, one, of course, to address the fact that I need to slow down and smell the roses, so to speak, but also because I can create a soap that has as few preservatives as possible, that use the be uses the best ingredients that I can obtain um, to address my specific skin needs. And ultimately what happened is over a period of time, I started making soap and others found out about it uh, and they enjoyed it as well. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a brief uh, demonstration of how I go about making soap. Let me just say, I know that uh, there are some soap experts out there who could probably do a, a far better job of demonstrating um, how to make soap and may find some fault in my particular technique. But it's the technique that I've worked out through my own research that works very well for me. It works very well for my skin. Um, and so I hope you enjoy it. I suggest gloves and covering your hair. After my area is set up, I begin by cutting the goat milk soap base into small cubes. It makes it easier to manage and it melts a lot more smoothly when I place it in the microwave. Once all the cubes are chopped, I place them in a microwave safe container so I can begin the melting process. In this case, it's a really large Pyrex measuring cup. Depending upon how much base you're melting, you'll want to take it out every 30 seconds to 60 seconds to give it a good stir. You don't want it to get too hot. Most manufacturers will tell you that their soap base does not need additional oils, that they're moisturizing enough. But because my skin is so dry with the vitiligo, I always add extra moisturizer and shea butter works really well for me. Whether or not you add fragrance to your soap is of course up to you. When I think of all the products that could contain fragrance, your soaps, deodorants, lotions, I err on the side of caution and often go fragrance free. Because this batch of soap is for someone else, I've added the fragrance cashmere because it's one that they really enjoy. I spritz my molds with alcohol before I fill them. I think it helps the soap to release easier when it's all dry. A quick spritz of alcohol will eliminate any bubbles that formed on top of your soap. 
Okay, it's been about three hours and we're gonna go ahead and see if I can't give you a look of what it looks like to unmold one of these soaps. So hopefully I can do it one-handed. But as you can see, the soap pulls away from the side pretty well. And if you just go ahead and press it out, it comes out pretty easily. And there you go. There's what one of the soaps look like when they come out of the mold. Anyone can do this. You do not have to have a special mold. You can pour your liquid soap into a paper cup just as easily as you can a mold. Uh, and when it comes out, you can just slice it to the thickness that you want. All the soaps are unmolded. That's all six. And they just need to be wrapped up individually, labeled, and they're ready to go. Making soap is one of the neatest crafts that I create. Uh, I really enjoy it. And at the end, you end up with a sudsy bubble bath sort of a situation in the sink. Um, I don't think it gets much better in crafting because some of them can be pretty messy. Uh, my biggest suggestion would be don't allow per perfection to be the enemy of the good. Uh, you do not have to be an expert to make soap. You just need to be interested and try. My suggestion is that you not get caught up on fancy molds or the most expensive product. Use the best products that you can afford in the moment. You can minimize fragrance, colorants, and other materials that you don't have any control over. If you know that you need a special product, uh, for this soap, for instance, stock up on the ingredients that you need. As a mother, as a wife, we go out of our way to make sure that our loved ones have all the materials that they need, whether it be food or medications or special creams and salves that make them feel good. Make sure that you have those ingredients for yourself so that you can take care of yourself and therefore be there for others. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.